Uh, the way I like to explain this usually is to imagine a figure skater when they want to do a, uh, a quick spin or pirouette, um, you'll see them tuck their arms in. So they'll make the, the mass closer to the center, essentially. And mm -hmm. then when they want to slow down, they put their arms out. Mm. And the same concept is applying to wheels where the smaller wheel is bringing the mass closer to the center. And that is making it easier for the vehicle to uh, accelerate and decelerate the um, the wheel and tire. Welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where today we're going to be talking about wheels and tires as they relate to electric vehicles. Now, before you go ahead and click away and watch some other video, maybe by some guy named Kyle, stay with me here because I've got a really super interesting guest today. His name is Drew Peterson. He runs a company called Martian Wheels out in Colorado. As a matter of fact, I had a set of these wheels on my Tesla Model S, and um, they're really good quality wheels. But more important than that, Drew knows a lot about cars. He knows a lot about EVs. He knows a lot about racing, and he knows a lot about tires and wheels. This is a new series that's going to be Learn with Dave. Today, I'm welcoming, welcoming Drew Peterson, the special guest, to learn all about wheels and tires, especially as they relate to EVs. So let's get into it. Here's a funny thing. The other day I ran into a viewer and he's like, Dave, I love to watch your videos. He was in my building as a lawyer. His name's Chris. Hey, Chris. And uh, I said, what do you drive? And he said, he drives a Model 3, a 2022 Model 3 Performance. I said, cool. Did you do any mods on it? He said, actually, yes, I did. I put on 18 inch wheels. And I said, oh, that's really cool. He goes, yeah, it rides so much better and it just handles better. He likes it so much better then I think it came, might have come with 20-inch wheels, a uh, uh, stock. And so that was cool. So then the next day, I was going down to get in my car with my buddy, John, who I work with. And I said, John, check out this Model 3 Performance, this Midnight Silver. He's got the black interior and the 18-inch wheels. And he goes, why, why would he want 18-inch wheels? I said, well, it's a smoother ride. You got a higher sidewall, and it actually gets you much better range. And he said, why is that? He said, I would have thought a bigger wheel and tire would have fewer rotations when, you know, for a particular given amount of distance, let's say a mile. And I would have thought that they would be less efficient. And I said, you know what? I don't really know. So I said, I'm going to ask Drew. All right, Drew. So welcome to the channel. I'm really pumped that you're here. It's great. It's great that you've joined us today. Oh, thanks, Dave. Great. Great to be here. <laughs> you know, some of you may re recall or recognize Drew from being on the channels, multiple channels. Uh, I don't think you've ever been on my channel before, but, you know, motoring and reviews many times. Um, actually, you were on this channel when we were out in Copper Mountain with the uh, with the oh, yeah. Nokian Tire event where you were teaching me how to drift the cars and you're a Model 3 performance guy and I know you're into racing and you even race on frozen lakes in the wintertime, which is like, and you don't just, you don't just race, you win. Look who we have here. Good morning, Drew. Morning. Drew, I'm eating, eating breakfast. That's all right. Drew, listen, I have one request. You got to teach me something today. Okay. All right. I want to learn. It shouldn't be hard. I want to learn the basics. I don't need to be the expert. Yeah. But I think I'm dangerous. You know what I mean? Cool. So, yeah. I think I know what I'm doing. With, with, uh, with I don't know. You know, just like, I want to hear you. You're the man, and, and uh, I want to learn. I, and I think I know what I'm doing, and I know I don't, so that's scary. Well, this is the perfect environment to uh, to learn. So, yeah, yeah, no doubt. We'll this is great. Time. Looking good. I love this. You got the Martian wheels. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Um, and you're an amazing driver. Um, and you've also uh, you've also gone on a couple of cannonballs with with Kyle, and so yep. you know, you've obviously spent a lot of a lot of time with him and. And, and then also most recently, even though we weren't in the same car, we did that ocean to ocean race. Uh, you were in the Cybertruck. Yes. That was the F-150. You didn't run out of juice. I did. And uh, <laughs> we went from Jacksonville all the way to San Diego. And boy, what a what a great, great fun time that was. Um, oh, just, yeah. You know, it's like Drew, Drew is like, hey, you know, I call up Drew. Hey, Drew, can you be on the channel? I want to talk about wheels and tires. Sure. All right. That's me. Kyle goes, hey, yeah. Drew. 
can you meet me in Jacksonville tomorrow? Right. We want, right. Run, we want to go cross country. And you, yeah, sure. I'll do that. So Drew, All you're, right. you're a sport. You really are. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't have anything on your schedule for the next like three days, right? <laughs> yeah. You can leave, you can like leave the house like right now. Yeah. yeah. And by the no, way, if those, you do uh... cancel it, right. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> right. that's but um, yeah. So, yeah. so no. what I wanted to do uh, was pick your brain on on wheels and tires and specifically around evs and and i'm gonna i'm gonna put up on the screen right now this this mind map that i've created where what mm -hmm. i've done is i've put down sort of in different categories my thoughts about wheels tires evs and some questions that i have and um, i know that the majority of the questions are are really related to tires um, not so much wheels um, but but i think that mm -hmm. most people when they buy a car whether it's a new car or a pre-owned car, they're, they're at some point going to have to be buying new tires for their car, whether it's because sure. they need snow right. tires or because they wear out their all seasons or what have you. Yeah. Um, so it's a much more common buying decision uh, uh, mm -hmm. with respect to tires. So therefore, I think I'm more familiar yeah, with Everybody that. buys tires. Everybody yep. buys tires, right? And um, you know, what my goal is hopefully to buy a car, sell the car before I need the tires, mm -hmm. but that's a whole different issue. <laughs> sure. You're, you're a little uh, unusual. Yeah. So anyway, okay. um, what what I thought I would do is is start off with the first question that really mm -hmm. prompted this video. Um, well, actually, the second question is what prompted this. Uh, I'm going to go right to that one first here, mm -hmm. um, which is do smaller wheels and tires, regardless whether or not it's an EV or a gas car, mm -hmm. Do they do they offer better range? And if you could explain why, if that is the case, why that it's the case? Yeah. So generally, yes, is the answer. Um, with with all other things being being equal, when you reduce the diameter of the wheel, um, that is ultimately usually going to give you a little bit more efficiency, whether that's MPG or you know, miles per kilowatt hour. Um, and the reason for that comes down to a couple things. The, uh, the first thing is uh, rotational inertia. So basically, uh, the way I like to explain this usually is to imagine a figure skater when they want to do a, uh, a quick spin or pirouette, um, you'll see them tuck their arms in. So they'll make the, the mass closer to the center, essentially. And mm -hmm. then when they want to slow down, they put their arms out. Mm. And the same concept is applying to wheels, where the smaller wheel is bringing the mass closer to the center. And that is making it easier for the vehicle to uh, accelerate and decelerate the, um, the wheel and tire. Uh, mm. So... So that's where that's where that part really helps. That's all is, that, uh, that makes all the sense in the world to me. And I get that visual too. Right. And by the way, nice. now, you know, like when you see the skaters, when they pull their arms in, they just start whipping around. It's unbelievable. Right. How much. So rotational inertia is is mm -hmm. one thing. The the second part is is aerodynamics, where um typically, you know, if you imagine airflow passing along the uh, the wheel and tire as it goes down the side of the car, uh, a tire, you know, being very smooth is a little bit more aerodynamic than, than a wheel, which has spokes. And I'm sure we'll get a little bit more into wheel design at some point, but, um, ultimately that's, that's another thing that helps you once you're already at speed, you've done your acceleration up to speed. Um, and so, yeah, both of those factors come into play where, Typically, you can be pretty safe with saying all other things being equal, smaller wheels and tires, more efficient. So once you do come up, so in stop and go traffic, that's where mm -hmm. that, that inertia, um, rotational inertia becomes much more of a play as to the yes. efficiency. But once you come up to mm -hmm. speed, even if you have a wheel that is got, let's say, the mass is towards the center, if it's super poorly, not not aerodynamically designed, once you're up to speed, you're not going to have great uh, efficiency because the aerodynamics become the biggest factor at, right. at speed. Yep. Right. Gotcha. All right, cool. Let's jump to now the first question. Do I need to purchase special tires for an EV 
-hmm. or are regular tires okay? You know, this is something that that I, I realized that EV tires, I, I've seen some recent ads where, you know, big tire companies are branding now the EV tire. And, and what I always used to think was the EV tire had some like foam on the inside to make it quieter or, mm -hmm. or some, but, but is it, I guess my question really was, do I need to special to buy special EV tires or can I put regular tires on, um, you know, an EV? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess the, the short answer is no, you don't need to buy a tire that has uh, an EV branding on it. Um, it's more the, uh, the load rating, first of all. So for safety, um, the load rating needs to be sufficient for your vehicle. And typically, uh, EVs are going to be a little heavier than their gas counterparts. Yeah. And so that's where EV branded tires are taking that into account also to increase the load rating, to make sure that they're sufficient for, for the potentially greater vehicle weight. And then the second part is rolling resistance, where that is essentially a measure of how much energy it takes to roll the tire down the road. And so, you know, to have a low rolling resistance means it's going to be more efficient. You'll see that in your MPG or miles per kilowatt hour as uh, as being a, yeah, a more efficient uh, trip that you take. So okay. um, definitely some benefits to, to EV uh, branded tires, um, but there's also some, some variables that come into play, use case and things like that, where sometimes we're not recommending an EV tire, um, but um, yeah, generally good idea. Okay. All right. Good, good. Um, and you, you kind of talked a little bit about tire ratings, but I, I you know, mm -hmm. in, in terms of vehicle load ratings, but, you know, when they talk mm -hmm. about like a V rated tire or they have these sure. different ratings. Is mm -hmm. that, is that a speed? Like, what is that? Can you tell us just a little bit about um, that? Yeah. V, um, Y, you know, that, that letter at the end of your, um, your tire spec designation right. uh that's that's for speed so that that certainly is important especially with the faster uh electric vehicles to make sure that that's good enough if you ever do plan to maybe explore what that number could be um that you well, have in um <laughs> in, right yeah on the autobahn and right. um so yeah that that should correlate with what the vehicle's capable of as well gotcha. and that usually goes along with uh, with other things that you want for for a sporty tire when we're talking about the the high speed rated tires. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then uh, let's see. I think we covered the last question there. Is there a specific rating for EV tires and what are the factors for these? You covered that. So uh, that, and that's fine. We don't have to go in uh, in complete order. You know, you had mentioned earlier some of the EV factors. There's there's they're, they weigh more, right? The batteries are super heavy. And so that puts a lot yep. of pressure on the tires. Um, and, and, and also with, a, with greater weight, when you come up to speed, you're going to have larger mm -hmm. stopping distances by definition, um, mm -hmm. just because you have more mass to stop. And then, and because of that, you, you're going to want to have better grip to be able to not only accelerate, but to slow down. Let's start with the concept of, or talk, talking a little bit about wheels. Now, I noticed mm -hmm. that Tesla is making a big deal about the new Model 3 Performance having 20-inch forged mm -hmm. yeah. wheels. And, sure. and I think I heard you were saying that you were kind of impressed that they did that. What, mm -hmm. what is the difference between a forged wheel and a cast wheel, and does mm -hmm. it matter? Um. Yeah, great. So yeah, it, it is uh, good to see Tesla doing that for the the Model Three Performance, where that's you know they've t clearly decided to take a bit more of a step to the performance, um, you know, to differentiate it, and and that's a good choice. I was um, yeah slightly surprised just because I know that that really does increase the cost uh, for for them on the manufacturing side for for that component. Mm -hmm. um, but they obviously thought it was worth it for uh, for the performance gain. 
Um, and so, yeah, I mean, basically, um, to break down in quick, simple layman's terms, uh, essentially three different ways to make wheels and it's, uh, it's cast flow formed and forged. So cast, basically you can imagine a liquid which is the molten aluminum. So you heat it up to it's the point where it becomes liquid mm -hmm. and you pour it, you pour it into a mold. And essentially in the case of casting, you know, that is the casting process. So now you've poured it into the mold, it cools down. There's other processes that you do, but essentially that's how you made the wheel is you mm -hmm. took molten, molten aluminum, you poured it into a mold, and you're done essentially mm -hmm. what that means what that means is that there was no there was no pressure first of all to uh to create the shape and so what you end up with is just however the liquid poured in to the mold is how it ended up setting and so you can look at it under a microscope and see uh there's basically air pockets in places and there's you know so there's weak spots mm -hmm. and so you need to use just more material to get to the level of strength that you need so that it's a functional wheel it's not just going to break right away when you use it so then you add a bunch of material and there you go that's your cast wheel that's the cheapest way to make wheels and it's the lowest quality mm -hmm. um so um so that is what you know, Tesla, OEM, you know, all, all sorts of other manufacturers, uh, you know, typically do. That's probably what, you know, 90 plus percent of wheels on the road are, are cast wheels, um, just because OEMs are buying more wheels than anybody else and they need to lower the cost of their vehicle. And that's one component that they can lower costs on. Mm -hmm. um, the, the second version goes, you know, you can take what you just learned about cast wheels and so that's the step one still is you pour the molten aluminum into the mold but then the barrel of the wheel which maybe you could throw up a graphic or something but um that's where you mount the tire to so that's your that's your outside you know rim of the wheel and that gets massaged into shape so that takes a lot of pressure you know you let the the mold cool you then move it to the flow forming you know process mm -hmm. and that that will create a a stiffer lighter and stronger uh barrel to the wheel which is really good for all the things we were talking about about rotational inertia and the benefits that that has um and you're also most likely if you're going to crack or damage a part of the wheel it's going to usually happen in the barrel and so a lot of benefits to taking the advantages of a cast wheel and then sort of optimizing it to make it as strong and light as possible mm -hmm. you get you get you know most of the cost benefits and a lot of the benefits that come with forging so forging is you basically do the barrel massaging part for the whole wheel mm. and it doesn't really look anything like the other processes you start with a a high quality um basically sort of well there's a few different ways to do it but most of the ways that or most companies do forging is to start with a sort of a blank uh billet aluminum piece so it looks like a wheel with sort of no detail and then it is compressed into the shape that it will be with immense pressure mm. so and heat not to the point where it's molten but just to make it soft mm -hmm. and so there's a machine a, a forging press that is you know it's the size of a house and hmm. costs you know multi millions dollars to to do this uh to buy this machine and ultimately it is it is compressing the the into its its shape 
Hmm. And so what that does is make um, all of those little pockets of air and all little, you know, sort of inconsistencies go away. So now you have a completely uniform wheel that has no variance from one part to another. And the material itself due to that pressure is much more dense and therefore strong. And therefore you can use a lot less material. So you end up with a wheel that is as light as possible while still having increased strength. So then you can play with, you know, from like our uh, perspective as a wheel manufacturer, we play with this all the time where, okay, we can make the wheel a little bit lighter, but then where are we sacrificing strength and is that worth it? And so that's one of the things that, you know, I think some of your viewers, viewers could really come away with something valuable, which is if you are going to buy wheels, don't just look at the weight and assume things from that. Also make sure that you know the load rating number. And so you can, you know, you got to be comparing those two numbers if you're searching on the market, um, especially for your EV. Again, that is that is heavier and requires that higher load rating. Right. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was a that was a an no no that, that that makes a breakdown. lot of sense. Now the the wheels, just out of curiosity, that you mm -hmm. manufacture, do you, mm -hmm. do you manufacture wheels in all three buckets for three different price points, or have you decided, hey, I'm only doing forged? So really, up until now, and uh, March and Wheels is is now officially five years old. Uh, we've done mostly um, forged wheels. And so really just shooting for, you know, what's the biggest possible upgrade we can make within the wheel category. And uh, that's also, you know, the most expensive. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's all we've done so far. And that's worked really well. But um, actually coming out uh, just probably at the end of this month, uh, we'll finally have our uh, first batch of flow formed wheels. Okay. So that's the second category, which is still an upgrade from your stock wheels, mm -hmm. um, but a lot less expensive than forged wheels. So yeah. it's really, you know, what what the average person can really gain uh, gain something from and be able to afford. And 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 do you do you only sell wheels that that work uh, that fit Tesla, or do you do multiple brands as well? Uh, mul multiple brands and um, yeah branching out okay. and uh yeah doing doing new stuff uh okay. all the time yep all right that's good ba bailey just heard that she's barking like crazy saying good job Drew. Nice. um <laughs> and like like i said if i didn't say it before i'll put a link to the description to your your website um so let's just talk about um i have here circumference smaller wheels mm -hmm. versus larger wheels narrow wheels versus wider wheels and then width mm -hmm. um you know, it, it to me, when I think about, like, you know, years ago when we had our house up in Vermont, I had an F-350 pickup truck. And I always got skinny mm -hmm. tires with big tread patterns. And when I mm -hmm. say tires, the wheels were, were, were you know, small wheels, big rubber. Mm -hmm. And then, but they yep. were skinny because I, I, I wanted to get through less surface area to get through deep snow. And mm -hmm. I, I think some of this is logical, right? It's physics that in terms of mm -hmm. what, what you're doing. But but what can you comment about um, these these uh, sort of con circumference and width with respect to EVs? Um, there are many different types of EVs mm -hmm. on the road, right? We have Rivian R1Ss and R1Ts, and we got you know Model Ss and Model Xs and Model 3s. But what, what can you talk about with these factors mm -hmm. with respect to EVs? Yeah, I mean, um, most of the same things would apply to to gas vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, generally, you know, uh, with the wider you go, you're probably also going to be increasing rolling resistance. And yeah. so you'll have less efficiency. You know, that's pretty logical and, and makes sense um, to most people. Uh, and then, you know, circumference. Um, that, that does end up being, uh, one of the things that we're worried about when it comes to the racing that we do, where, um, you have to play with the, the power band of the, of the car a little bit. And so we want actually the maximum circumference that we, that we can get. Um, and then from a, 
you know, daily driving perspective, what that's doing is giving you more rubber in between the wheel and the road, in right. between you and the road, essentially. And so that's also usually good for uh, for ride comfort. Yeah. Um, so like on, on Model Y, for instance, uh, you know, if you get the 19s, it's a 2, uh, 55, 45, 19. And you can just bump up that second number to 50, gaining, you know, a bunch of rubber and um and that a lot of a lot of comfort that comes with that um but yes the downside of that would be uh, also some uh efficiency loss yeah yeah no that makes sense tell me yep. a little bit about the rationale for staggered uh wheels set up so mm -hmm. yep model s was staggered new version refresh uh model s although they did a little bit with uh previous um gen as well Model 3 Performance now, first Model 3 to come with uh, with a staggered setup. And so it is, there's a lot of things that come into play. Uh, ultimately, the handling balance is one of the biggest factors, mm -hmm. at least in my mind. And so a lot of times that can be a bad thing where you really want the car to use all four of its tires equally through a corner. And um, sometimes when you have a skinnier tire on the front, you end up with a car that understeers. And right. so it's going to slide the front first and ultimately you're going to just go, go slower. So, but if you tune the chassis to still handle well uh, using alignment and other suspension adjustments, um, then it can, it can have some benefits where I'm sure Tesla engineers were looking at how do we, get the car to go faster around a racetrack, faster down the drag strip as well, um, but lose as little efficiency as possible. Mm -hmm. And those front, those front tires are the ones that are going to be experiencing a little bit more of the efficiency uh, or aerodynamic loads. So make those a bit skinnier, but give yourself a bit more rubber. Be putting more rubber on the road with the wider rear tires and then tune the chassis, and I'm sure it'll be faster than than the old car. Um, so yeah, but for the average person, and we get a lot of like Model Y performance uh, owners who come and they want to not only go smaller like we've talked about, but also be able to rotate your tires, which just makes more sense. So right. for the average person, we totally recommend just same size all around, for all Tesla models. Um, and that is uh, just very beneficial for realistically using the car because you can rotate your tires. Right. And, and, and when it comes to uh, having the same size, let's say not staggered setup, there, mm -hmm. there's also a direction that the tire goes, right? So like, at least from what I've seen that you can't necessarily take your right rear and put it onto your mm -hmm. left front or something like that. Can you explain mm -hmm. the directional aspect of, uh, maybe I'm jumping yeah. in the tires a little bit, but it's on top. Oh of no. Me. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this, this, this road can take us down all sorts of you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. various aspects of tires and there are directional tires and there are non-directional tires. Okay. So if yes, if you have directional tires, it'll be very clear, you know, probably just look by looking at the tread itself. But otherwise, then yes, they'll also have that arrow that shows which way that the tire should spin. And uh, then yes, you can do front to rear rotations, or you have to unmount the tire and switch it if you want to do anything else because you want them to be spinning the right way. The materials that are used in the best mm -hmm. wheels that are made versus, let's say, the most common wheels that are cast are they the same materials and it's just the process of the pressure or do you do you tend to play with the different alloys and different mixtures of different metals mm -hmm. generally at least in our world of newer vehicles and especially electric vehicles it, they're all going to be aluminum uh but yes it's you know it's a blend of uh of different materials and yes forged wheels do need a different uh makeup of that alloy than than cast mm -hmm. um that doesn't end up being a, a really massive 
um, difference or really something that you can choose one or the other as a, as a consumer because wheel companies are just using the right thing for the right application. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, uh, especially talking about your, your truck and things like that, they may have come with steel wheels. And, you know, that would be the tier even below cast aluminum wheels. Right. Um, where, uh, yeah, very heavy, um, very, very cheap and, you know, not, not good for anything performance oriented, but, uh, but very cheap. I mean, yeah. that's, I mean that's you, gotta, you gotta love the, yeah. the Subaru Outbacks running around Vermont with steelers, <laughs> you know, sure. Like, yeah. you know, with, with, uh, with, what do they call them? The, the, the the um the wheel the tires and they have the the not what do you call those the metal spikes in them the oh uh, sure yeah some studded yeah, some yeah. studded yeah like when I'm I'm visiting yeah. you in Fort Collins in August and you hear them coming down the road because no one swaps <laughs> yeah. them out you know it's like it's like oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty a lot of studded tires around here for sure yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. um cool all right so and and the last thing I wanted to talk about with respect to wheels um you know mm -hmm. Especially on the Model Y, the performance wheels, everybody's curb rashing those things. They just the mm -hmm. way the wheel is designed, they stick out. And you know, I've seen some some aftermarket products for these wheel protectors, but at the end of the day, it's inevitable that you're you're most likely going to curb rash your wheel. And boy, does that send a you know, it just makes your heart you go crazy unless you don't care about your <laughs> wheels. Um, is it is I know there are a bunch of companies out there that that can recondition wheels. Do you see any downside to mm -hmm. doing that? And is there is there something to look for as a consumer when you're thinking about reconditioning your wheels from respect to curb rash? Uh, there are some technical advantages to having basically a wheel that's wider than the tire, and so you get a very precise handling feel. And the efficiency is much better relative to putting a wider tire on that same sized wheel. Um, so yeah, expect to see a lot more of that um, exposed rim and very easy, easily curbable uh, wheel situation going going forward. Um, so it depends on the level of damage when that happens. Um, a lot of time it is just cosmetic you know, some scratches of the paint and maybe a little bit of the wheel itself um, where wheel repair companies can, yeah, they can, they can get it back to pre practically brand new. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Once it goes a little bit further and starts to become, you know, a potentially structural issue with the wheel, um, then it becomes a case by case basis. So yeah. The, the confidence of the particular repairer on your particular issue. Um, yeah, it, it's going to be hit or miss. Yeah. And uh, we, we definitely, you know, lean towards uh, replacing uh, rather than repairing. Yeah. Um, just to be cautious because it's, you know, in the big picture, uh, you know, hundreds or even thousands of, of dollars for your wheels that, that, you know, take your family down the road is yeah. nothing. So, um, all right, let's swap over. Let's go to see, mm -hmm. let's talk about some EV tires. Um, mm -hmm. some of the challenges that I, again, these are my thoughts here, not, not Drew's. So forgive me, but I, I don't necessarily want to nest, go through every one of these, but I'm, I'm going to put these up here. The challenge is that the, the tires need to carry a heavier load. They have to mm -hmm. withstand also higher torque. I mean, these, these EVs, they just when you when you give it the beans, they just like you know rip, right? And and when you have a dual yep. motor or even a quad motor EV, you're you're going to be really chirping the wheels a lot more. So what I've what I've come to hear is the the lifespan of tires EV, on EVs mm -hmm. is so much shorter. So while mm -hmm. you may save a lot of money on on repairs or not doing oil changes. You know the the naysayers of EVs because not EVs are not all great. Let's be honest. You know they they I love them, but you know one of the downsides is you're going to typically go through tires much faster than you would in a mm -hmm. lighter car that doesn't have the same level of of torque. Um, mm -hmm. And so, any any thoughts on that? Does that uh, anything you'd like to comment on that? Yeah. So um, I mean, it's it's your right foot's fault uh, mostly. 
but um, it's just so much easier to accelerate uh, with an electric vehicle that it's it's hard to uh, to not use that that awesome awesome power and torque that that you have. So um, you know, from the from the driving uh, perspective, you can use like chill mode in yeah. in a Tesla to just not even give yourself the the option of of ripping your tires off. Um, but yeah, generally, you know, yeah, all those factors, higher weight, large amounts of torque. Um, that's just going to be, that's going to be tougher on the tires. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I figure so. And it, and it's mm -hmm. also one of the things that a lot of people complain about, you know, I drive the model X plaid, which you've driven many times right. and, and, and the, the inside of the, of the tires, mm -hmm. you know, tend to wear out more than the mm -hmm. outside of the tires. Um, mm -hmm. why, why is that? Uh, well, that's an alignment thing. So that's that's a little bit too much camber. The Model X is pretty notorious for that, where the rear wheels uh, have more camber than uh, you know probably they should for um, for tire life reasons. And camber is basically the the angle of the of the wheels in this in this direction. So the Model X is kind of like that, where you know then you have the insides of the tires um contacting the road much more and they're going to wear out first yep yeah so you there are some aftermarket uh you know uh just control arm adjustable control arms for, right. for model x uh which which is a good good choice yep yeah and, and why wouldn't tesla offer that up i mean this isn't all just about tesla here today but you know you, you would think that if that's a known problem I guess they don't mm -hmm. care, right? You're going to buy tires. You buy my car, now you're going to go buy tires, whatever. But yeah, if arms can fix it. What's what's the what's the uh, trade off of of them not doing that? The I mean, OEMs and yeah, it's it's not not just Tesla. You know, we can we can put um, pretty much every every automaker into the same category of you know they need to make a vehicle that's um, you know safe and and hit certain marks in in safety and maneuverability um tests and so you know a racer like me um we like very different alignment settings because we can handle a car when it's at the limit or or above but the average person can't and needs to rely on the systems that the vehicle has and so it's better to uh, to give the rear of the car a little bit more grip in a, a dynamic situation where you're really throwing it around or avoiding you know somebody that stopped in front of you on the highway. Um, and so that that ends up being the better choice for some reasons, but then you know tire life and and other things become affected neg negatively. It's a compromise, like so many things. Um, I, I really, every, every bolt and, and design choice on the vehicle has some sort of compromise to it. Right. That makes a lot of sense to me. Let, let's talk a little bit about tread patterns. Um, one of the things I, I researched earlier today was that a more shallow tread will not flatten as much, creating less resistance. Now, does that make mm -hmm. sense? And if it does, mm -hmm. can you explain that? Yeah, flatten or squirm would probably be the term we're we're using most. Where, um, yeah, uh, you know, think about a really tall tread to take it to the you know extreme, and you want to put a lot of load on that you know like big off road tire or something like that. Um, you you can just imagine you know that that tread you know has a lot of flex to it, so um, that takes energy, and so yeah for. Uh, for sporty tires and, um, you know, when the manufacturers are trying to hit good numbers, they're going to put, you know, stickier tread uh, tires with, with lower tread depth. Uh, that's that's going to make the car uh, handle better, perform better. Uh, but then obviously, you know, you don't have much um, uh, rain, you know, hydroplaning uh, resistance, and then also you'll need to replace the tire much sooner. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we talked a little earlier about rolling resistance, skinnier tires, mm -hmm. wider tires, so we can skip that. But let's talk about, about 
soft compounds. Um, I, I, I used to sell, I don't think I've ever told you this, but I, I used to sell skateboards when I was in, in high school. And um, I used to ride skateboards and take pictures and sell the pictures to the guys in the skate parks. And I was really into it. I wasn't very good. I mean, I could ride in a half pipe, but I, I used to sell wheels. And mm -hmm. uh, so I guess we have something in common. I didn't manufacture wheels. Nice. I sold them. And, and we used to always talk about viscosity of wheels, right? If you okay. were, doing, if you were slaloming, you know, then I would sell you this type of wheel, but if you were sure. you know, a wooden half pipe, I would sell you that type of wheel as opposed to a concrete or a pool. We mm -hmm. go with that. So, you know, what I, what I learned was that it's kind of like how soft the rubber is in, in the tire or in the, mm -hmm. I'm talking wheels, but I'm really saying tires mm -hmm. back then with the bearings, yep. all sort of one thing, tire and wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, but the one thing that I've heard is that if you if you run, let's say, a summer tire, it's not just that the tread is is smaller or thinner or mm -hmm. what or not as aggressive as let's say a winter tire, but but the softer the softer compounds of a summer tire when it gets below 32 degrees, the tire itself, like water, mm -hmm. will freeze. And therefore, mm -hmm. it does. It's not as malleable. And so, when you go to actually accelerate, it's like it's like a brick on, uh, as opposed to having something that's a little bit more, um, you know, um, softer compound. And so, yep. you know, and then and then you hear about these, like even when we were at the Nokian Tire event, I remember um, learning that there's all season tires. So you got summer tires, all season mm -hmm. tires, all weather tires, then mm -hmm. winter tires and then maybe specialized ice tires or what have you as well but can, maybe you can just talk a little bit about these different compounds and what's best for the average just say you mm -hmm. know consumer or someone on my channel is not a racer and and all that can you really get away with um you know one set of tires and wheels and what's mm -hmm. the the average person going to do when they get their model three performance which has summer tires on them are they going to have to run oh yeah or, you know, so these, this is sort of a con concept that mm -hmm. I want to your brain on. Absolutely. And, and it's the, the safety aspect really comes in into play here. Um, so yeah, it's, that's really uh, good to bring up because it's, it's very valuable information. Um, so I guess starting with summer tires, uh, like you mentioned, uh, part of what makes them summer tires is that the, the compound of the, tire of the rubber uh the viscosity you know is part of what you you were alluding to um is designed for hot temperatures so that's that's really the big thing that we're talking about is is temperature relative to how the rubber responds and so your summer tire which is very happy when it's you know 80 90 degrees out is not going to be happy when it's uh, 40 degrees, definitely below freezing, um, where basically, you know, it goes from being pliable, where you can imagine it conforming to all the different intricacies of a road and providing grip to where it becomes very hard. And there's no, no compliance anymore. And you can actually damage the tire too. So there's the, um, the lack of uh, traction issue which uh most people might only ever experience when they need to do an emergency braking and then they they're not going to be able to stop in time hmm. um and then you're also going to damage the tires when you run them uh in that low of a low of a temperature so um so definitely don't run your summer tires uh on your new model performance out in the uh, uh you know on the east coast when it's uh, winter time and um tire technology has come a long way especially in the last really five ten years it's really come leaps and bounds uh, electric vehicles have also seemed to accelerate that um where the uh, the all-weather tire is uh, is a new category so all season would be what all weather is kind of sort of transitioning into uh, but with a focus on really being capable in, you know, snow and ice conditions. Mm -hmm. But, you know, unlike those people that you see in Fort Collins that uh, are still running around on their studded snow tires in the in the middle of the summer. Right. Um, 
all weather tires, you can use them really all year round. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that for the, for the person that, um, really doesn't, uh, need or care too much about the summer performance and really just wants to think about their tires as little as possible, get all weather tires and yeah, Nokian great, great, uh, company to buy them from for your EV. They have EV focused, um, all weather tires, really great. Um, and then, you know, you obviously have your winter, uh, tires, which are going to be the best performing in snow and ice conditions. But, um, then, you know, the opposite of summer tires, you'll be damaging them in the summer if you run them. Yeah. So I guess one of the benefits of bifurcating um, and having summer tires and and then dedicated winter tires is that you're only going to be running them six months of the year on one mm -hmm. set, six months. So you're you're in effect going to double the life of those tires. Um, yep. But but I guess I guess the question is if someone's buying a um, you know whatever it is whatever car it is. Would, would you recommend going with a larger wheel summer setup and then in the winter time, smaller wheel winter tire, or mm -hmm. would you say, okay, listen, not that big a deal. Just find a tire that can fit your wheel that is, you know, used in the summer and in the winter. What, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on that? Yeah. So the, the optimal thing to do would be you have a, probably slightly larger diameter wheel for the summer uh, and also wider. And that's going to be the best handling, you know, in that summer, especially performance driving uh, situation. And then for winter, go as small as possible with the, the diameter and the width, really. Um, and so that's just going to, you know, first of all, maximize your efficiency because EVs are going to lose efficiency in the winter. The and cold, that's right? a, yeah. exactly, yep, just just energy density. And then uh, those are going to be the best performing uh, winter tires. And so, you know, like you say, it's kind of a six month, six month situation where, yeah, the ideal thing, you've got two sets of wheels and tires you do it twice a year and it's pretty painless. Drew, you just said something that I, I never really thought about. The the density of the air, I think is what you said, is it, it, I always think about the molecules in the air when it's 12 degrees out. They're all huddling together and saying, oh, I'm cold. Whereas when it's mm -hmm. hot out, they're like, get away from me. And so, you know, the, the mm -hmm. air itself is way less dense in the hot weather than it is in right. the cold weather. And so is that the factor that really, you know, uh, is, mm. what percentage of a factor is that contributing to the less efficiency mm. of an EV in the cold weather versus the battery I, itself? Yeah, I don't have that number, but okay. um, yeah, it is certainly, it's certainly a blend. Um, you know, just like how, you know, Kyle talks about the, the range tests he's doing up here at our altitude at a mile high um is really you know that needs to be viewed in a in a bubble where it doesn't necessarily correlate to the same numbers you're going to get at sea level because of because of air density um yeah that that's a that's a pretty pretty huge factor uh and if you're you know a pilot uh you you need to know this because you know if your plane's heavy on a really hot day at high altitude you might not be able to take off. <laughs> so, right. um, you know, it, it is, it's a, it's a pretty big thing. That explains what blend, I'm not sure. kicked off that flight last summer. They're like, Connor, get off, <laughs> get off the plane. We got to overweight. Oh man. All right, cool. Um, yeah. So we talked a little bit about firmer compounds, less rolling resistance, summer, su summer, mm -hmm. all season, all weather, snow ice. Tell me a little bit about the foam that I hear about that's mm. put inside of EV tires. Mm -hmm. what, what do they do that for? Yeah, uh, it's cool. I, I uh, had the opportunity to go to Goodyear's Proving Grounds uh, down in Texas to do a whole bunch of fun stuff uh, with, with Kyle and the out-of-spec guys. 
And one of the things uh, that they did was show us the difference, uh, same exact tire back to back without foam and then with foam. Hmm. And it's a, it's a noise reducing uh, function. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's, that's why a lot of the EV tires also have foam is because you don't have anything else to listen to. So you only really have no tire noise to, to worry about. Um, and it's, it's more of a difference than I expected, actually. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if I would still recommend it for most people. I've also seen in the worst cases that foam coming like delaminated from the tire and just causing all sorts of problems. Um, usually ends up in a manufacturer replace, but um, uh, still, you know, could force you to go to a tire shop when you don't need to. So to yeah, feel like it's, the, the, it's unbalanced. Is that what you feel? Well, yeah. I mean, if it comes, if it comes dislodged, you can have a massive imbalance. Yeah, because, okay. you know, wheels and tires are measured down to the quarter of an ounce or maybe even less. Wow. And then you have this, you know, multi-pound thing that's floating around in there. I mean, it would just be, you know, you'd knock your fillings out. Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but, you know, pretty rare case, I, I think. And um, if you want to really optimize the, the noise level of your tires, then, yeah, go with okay. the, so uh, it's the foam. sound insulation is really, really mm -hmm. wonderful. Yep. Let's let's talk just about sidewalls. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the way I think of of uh, if you have a very low profile tire, big wheel, low profile tire, mm -hmm. when you put that car now again, forgetting about suspension, stiffness of suspension, let's just talk about the wheel and tire combination. If I've got a big wheel with a with a low profile, let's call mm -hmm. it sport type tire, then that's going to translate. There's going to be less less give in the tire, which is going mm -hmm. to translate the energy as I'm going through a turn to the suspension, which will then make yep. the car handle better. Um, and I think I've gotten great, that. Great way the, to put it. I, I've gotten that over the yep. years because I've driven all, I mean, this is nothing really to do with EV. It's just physical sidewall mm -hmm. here in the Northeast. Um, people are blowing out their 22 inch wheel, you know, the, the, yeah. the bending rims and, and it's like, there's this cool factor, I think, Oh, look how big my wheels are and how small sure. my tires are. Oh yeah. But, but one of the things I've learned about that rubber band is yeah, it, right. Exactly. Just like a little bit of glue on the outside of it. But, <laughs> right. You know, but one of the things I've learned from you is the real cool guys are running smaller wheels with bigger rubber. Um, on average, not say not necessarily say the racers, but mm -hmm. don't, don't be afraid to have a mod like my my new buddy Chris with his Model Three Performance. He's running eighteens, right? Yeah. And so, so talk a little bit about about this concept of sidewall size factors. Yeah, um, I mean, yes, generally there's and there are some exceptions in certain use cases um like really high-end supercars and things like that where they've you know they're just trying to go as big as possible with diameter everything and like you know things are really on the extreme end but um yeah generally your your wheel larger wheel and really low profile tire is going to just yeah increase the probability of of problems right. uh for for the average person and so yeah um you know sticking with the tesla theme 20s on a model 3 we think are too big 21s on a model y uh we think are too big um because it just gets to a certain point uh where the rubber is just not not quite enough to handle you know, the average roads. I mean, hopefully, you know, you live in a place that you don't have to worry about that stuff, but you know, how many of us actually do? Yeah. Um, so yeah, having a bit of rubber is uh, extra rubber is um, good insurance. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. And I mean, even on my model X, I went with the twenties, you know, like mm -hmm. as opposed to the 22s and, and, it, mm -hmm. and, it, and it rides great. I will say though, yeah. that I did a while back, Kathy and I, we drove, we test drove a Model Y uh, long range, and then we test drove a Model Y performance. And, mm -hmm. and this was a 2023 where I know they did some tweaks to the suspension. 
and I, I was I was pleasantly surprised how I thought the Model Y performance on 21s, I think it was. Maybe it was mm -hmm. the 21s, yeah. Yep. I, I thought it I thought it rode really well. Mm -hmm. I was surprised how well it how, how how the smoothness of it compared to let's say the the 19s that are on the mm -hmm. on the uh, the long range. Um mm -hmm. to the point where that wouldn't have been necessarily a factor, but those those wheels yeah. sticking out, the curb rash factor, and the fact that if you really hit a, a you know, you're on the West Side Highway or you're FDR and you're coming home from work in New York City and you hit yeah. one of those classic New York City potholes or wherever you live, the odds of you blowing out your wheel and tire and being stranded, and don't forget, they don't give you a spare, right? So right. You're, like, what sure. do you do? Like yeah. you're screwed, right? You know, it's it's crazy to me that 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 we don't have spare tires anymore and they give you a, a foam kit or some kind of air compressor and it's like, that, that right. only helps in what percentage of the time when you really need that you know it's, it's but it's, you've got you've got roadside assistance and, and oh yeah in your in your experience they're they show up in a few minutes right i mean you know let's not talk about i mean i remember <laughs> years ago we blew out a tire on the lie and i think it was my model x by my, my old Model X, my 2016. And we sat on the side of the road for three hours waiting for a tow a flat bud to come get us that dropped the car off at Syosset. And then they were closed. Right. And so I had to Uber home to Connecticut. And then the place didn't, well, back in the day, you, you couldn't get tires for the Model Xs. So I had to wait two weeks for a tire. I'm like, what you know? What am I doing here? This is crazy. I mean, my my 1978 Honda Accord, yeah. you know, hatchback, five speed. That thing had a had a had a wheel had a, a spare tire. Sure. You know, yeah, full full um, size. I'm sure. Yeah, you, you see all these Jeep Wrangler guys running around, and you're like, ah, he's stupid. But then he's got this big giant wheel on the back. He's like, smart guy, mm. you know. So, right. well, listen, Drew, this has really been super helpful. Um, I, I've learned a lot. Uh, I, know, I know I've taken way more of your time than than I probably should have, but you know we talked no about a lot of different things here that I think for those that maybe can listen to this at two x or maybe even three x, there's a lot of really good information here, and and I just want to thank you so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge, yeah. Andrew. No, no problem at all, and um, yeah, I think we we started to touch on some of the uh, the things where you could go an another level or two deeper, and uh, so you know we're Martian Wheels is there for uh, people's uh, you know questions if they ever want to ask and uh, and go deeper. Um, but yeah, this has been been great, and I hope uh, valuable to your to your. Oh, right. absolutely, and 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 listen, I encourage my audience reach out to Drew, send him an email at Martian Wheels, even if you're not planning on buying a set of wheels. Hopefully, you don't mind. I'm saying that, Drew, but but he's a great okay. resource. He's a great guy. He's a great friend, and um, you know he he's he's just a wealth of knowledge. So hopefully, you've learned a little bit today. I've learned a lot. I've confirmed some things that I think I actually did know. So I was pretty proud of myself there. Um, and that's only because you've taught me in the past. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll give you the credit right back at you. But but anyway, Drew, thanks again uh, for coming on, and everyone, thanks again for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave. We'll catch you on the next one. Please let me know if you like this kind of video. I think I'm going to be doing more of these Learn with Dave's because that's the only way to learn. Um, learn with Dave. So anyway, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.